see that little bitty hole right there? It's a little tiny, little little knot, little tiny knot hole. And I actually leave it in there for authenticity because it, it wasn't unusual to see a little hole like that in these old guns. Little bitty knots and things, they didn't have a big problem with that. If you'll put some super glue in there, in this stage of the game, and take some of this dust and drop in there on top of it, kind of pack it in there. And make no mistake, if you dwell with your thumb, you can be glued to a stalk. And then as that dust goes in there, it'll fill up that little, that little hole and make it. You can still see it, but it's, it's not empty, it's full. It's full of uh, walnut dust and glue and it'll finish finish over it pretty well little bitty cracks and defects you can take care of this way little bitty ones I would never put a, a little knot hole in a, a more modern gun <clears throat> but in something like this it was not uncommon to have them in there That just dries in a minute or two. It'll dry in a few seconds where you can work with it, but it'll dry in a couple of minutes. Especially if you put your thumb on it, apply some heat. It'll dry in a couple of minutes really hard. According to the rules of geometry, by definition, the intersection of two planes is a line. And that little line, little curved line, mirrors that little curved line right there. And when you get this plane and this concave and this convex that intersect, you get that line. And there's just something very, very graceful about that little curved line right there maybe it's just me I don't know but I didn't invent that I don't know who did but it clicks and one thing about old guns that people bring they got rust on they got places where they've just not been taken care of and they're old and they've been beat up and they've had a hard life and all that stuff but one thing you absolutely don't want to do to somebody else's old gun is put a scratch on it because a scratch shows up like a ward on a beauty queen and you don't want to scratch somebody's old gun so I stay away from that metal like the plague you notice when I was rasping a while ago cutting that with a rasp a fine rasp I left this about a sixteenth of an inch higher here than there All right, then I took that wood file and I brought it down, I smoothed it up, and I brought it down a little closer. So now it's about 30 seconds. When I get done sanding on it, it'll be about half that. But you have to leave yourself room to sand and, and dress things down. You've got to leave yourself room. If you don't, you end up below the surface, and that looks worse. Well, it just looks bad. You, you ought to be a little bit above the surface, really, especially on these older guns. They left them... They left them proud quite a bit. I don't know if it was to take to take the brunt of the skins and scuffs and not hit the metal, or the fact that these things were some of them were just so tiny and delicate looking that they needed a little bit of beefing up with the wood. I don't know, but they they were usually proud, a little bit proud of the metal.
I got this pencil sharpened to where you about need a class 3 license to carry it. I'm going to put a really fine line around that socket. Because I'm not positive, see, that this socket is in the very middle of the hole that goes through there. If it was in the middle, you know, I could just drill a hole in the center of a hole. I don't know that. So this should tell me. So now I need to drill the right size hole. See, it's off centered. It's, it's not exactly centered, but it it's in the middle of where it needs to go to hold it on the barrel. That's the main thing. Now I can drill a hole and leave that pencil mark, go just inside that pencil mark to the right depth. <clears throat> then I can lay that escutcheon in there. Then I'm ready to start the finishing on this thing. Woohoo! Something pretty close to that. Next thing is, I gotta figure out how far down it goes. Thing is 0.222 deep. It probably wouldn't hurt if it was a little tiny bit recessed below the surface. It's kind of hard to measure straight up and down, but that's really close to it. And I'm gonna to have to drive that thing in place because this hole is 10,000 smaller than the outsides. This thing has little ridges, little little bitty ribs up and down it to keep it from spinning around. And so you can drill the hole smaller and then you have to, uh, you have to drive it down in place. It's seated just a teeny bit below the surface. Let's me sand off my pencil mark. See if this screw is the correct length. Once I got all that done, I hope it is. That tightens up very nicely. I'm I'm really happy with that. All things considered, that could have gone a lot worse, which proves. Uh, that I'd much rather be lucky than good. Now I'm ready to finish it. Put the finish on it. I'm going to leave that escutcheon in there. It won't hurt a thing. Um, <clears throat> I've got to make something to hold this thing. I'm going to put something there and stick a screw in it where I can just hold on to it while I'm doing my finish work. And that's what I'm ready for next. I'm going to stain it tonight and then I'll put, start putting finish on it tomorrow. All right, I'm going to let this dry all night. Um, I won't be able to work on it much tomorrow during the day. A friend of mine bought a house to flip, and it's about to flip him. It's kind of gotten away from him. But I'm going to let that dry all night long, and then I'll come back and start putting the finish on it. I've got actually three guns I'm doing all at the same time with the finish. It's so uh, that glare kind of blocks out the ability to see the grain but it's it's a pretty piece of wood it, it's not bad it, I, it looked more straight than this when I started with it and it kind of the the curliness of the grain kind of got more and more evident as I worked it and I have no problem with curly grain I like it a lot This is the solution I came up with keeping this stuff fresh. Just blow all the air out of it. You can slam that plastic piece on there as fast as you can. And as you're tightening this, if you will uh, squeeze this can and force the air out as much as you can. And then when you, when you snug that piece of plastic down on that seal, it draws it down and, and seals it really well. That's the best way I've found to keep this stuff viable.
it's good stuff but it's expensive and you don't want to lose it now you do need to be careful what you eat when you blow into there because the next day if you've been eating linguine or something like that it's a uh, uh, yeah 